Hello, I'm Danielle Bellardo. Um, I am a cardiologist in Newport Beach, California, and I am here to present about nutrition and cardiovascular disease prevention in women today. I have no disclosures. So starting with the epidemiology of heart disease. Unfortunately, heart disease uh, remains to be the number one killer of both men and women in the United States. The estimated annual incidence of a heart attack in the U.S. is 580,000 per year, and new attacks for new attacks and 210,000 for recurrent attacks. Um, you know, 790,000, so almost a million people in the U.S. have heart attacks every year, and about 114,000 of those, unfortunately, will die. Um, as this is becoming a greater and greater uh, issue with regards to heart disease always remaining the number one killer, the focus has shifted in many ways in cardiology onto prevention. Approximately every 40 seconds in the U.S., though, still an American will have and suffer from a heart attack. Cardiovascular disease is the leading global cause of death, accounting for 17.3 million deaths per year in 2013. And by 2030, it's expected to grow to 23.6 million. But how common is heart disease in women? Well, it is the leading cause of death for women, as I mentioned, just like men. And in the US, it, it kills 300,000 women in 2017, about one of every five uh, female deaths can be associated to heart disease. It's the leading cause of death for African-American and white women in the US. And among American Indian and Alaska Native women, heart disease and cancer causes roughly the same number of deaths per year. For Hispanic and Asian or Pacific Islander women, heart disease is the second only to cancer as a cause of death. So what are the key uh, tools to reducing the risk for heart disease? What's the key to primary prevention? Well, a lot of our key um, to primary prevention of heart disease is to focus on reducing risk factors. The most important way to prevent atherosclerotic vascular disease, heart failure, and atrial fibrillation is to promote this healthy lifestyle throughout life for all of our patients. And of course, we recommend a team-based care approach. Hyperlipidemia, diabetes, hypertension, smoking cessation, obesity, and exercise are all different areas of risk factors for cardiovascular disease that we can work with our patients to help reduce these risk factors through lifestyle modification. Well, what do we know about hyperlipidemia and diet? Well, there's been a lot of really interesting research on this. Um, this was one study published in the American Journal of Cardiology in 2009. They actually did a meta-analysis of numerous studies looking at various different um, studies looking at different dietary patterns and um, lipids. And in this study, they, in particular, they actually looked at plant-based diets to see how could a plant-based diet help with uh, cholesterol versus a standard diet. Um, and in most of these studies, if you look at these are actually observational studies, um, they found that the effect of a plant-based diet was quite robust in reducing LDL cholesterol. In general, um, in almost every study they found, uh, plant-based diets were able to reduce um, LDL cholesterol significantly as compared to the control group. Um, and additionally, this study also looked at the effect of plant-based diets in randomized controlled trials. So when they examined um, these five controlled studies, there were randomized controlled studies that randomized patients to a plant-based diet or to um, a standard, either standard uh, AHA diet or um, standard ADA diet, they found that these patients had also were able to show, demonstrate an improvement in their LDL cholesterol with eating a plant-based diet. And why is this? Well, why is nutrition so important in reducing LDL cholesterol? And one of the components of this is that plant-based diets are naturally lower in saturated fat. Um, a lot of saturated fat, high saturated fat, we find in some animal products, including cheese, red meat, processed meats, and things like that, as well as um, general uh, processed foods. But plant-based diets usually are higher in fiber, lower in saturated fat, and higher in um, 
mono and polyunsaturated fat. And so this was an interesting study where they looked into lipidemia. They looked at dietary lipids and blood cholesterol. They did a quantitative meta-analysis of metabolic ward studies. And they found that substituting saturated fat with mono or polyunsaturated fat helped to reduce LDL cholesterol. Mostly the effect is seen with poly, the substitution of polyunsaturated fat. Um, and then this study was actually, there was actually a, an additional study done by Mensnick where he did a regression analysis. And he found that looking at all of the studies, whether they were, um, uh, he used the Mensnick equation, which essentially um, took into account all the different substitutions, whether you're substituting saturated fat for carbohydrates or monounsaturated fat or polyunsaturated fat. And he did find the relationship that was observed between uh, observed and protected serum LDL cholesterol concentrations and saturated fat intake. So as um, people were increasing their saturated fat intake and reducing their consumption of other, um, such as monopolyunsaturated poly fat or um, carbohydrates, their LDL was rising. And as we know from so much cardiology literature, um, hyperlipidemia, especially high LDLC cholesterol, is incredibly important in cardiovascular disease risk. Um, we have so many studies um, ranging from Mendelian randomization studies, prospective cohort studies, randomized controlled trials that show us there really is a relationship between LDL cholesterol and developing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So we really, when it comes to prevention, have to focus on using all the tools we have in our toolbox for our patients to help reduce their risk for cardiovascular disease and diet is one of them. Well, what about hypertension? What about the other um, plant-based, uh, the other ways a plant-based diet or plant-predominant diets can, can help with hypertension? Well, um, plant-based and plant-predominant diets such as the DASH diet or a vegetarian diet, they may lower both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Um, some of the mechanisms assumed are favorably modifying the renin angiotensin and sympathetic nervous systems, um, greater potassium intake and decreased sodium consumption, um, improving blood vessel dilation, changes in baros receptors. Um, there's prospective cohort data showing us that red meat and poultry uh, increases incident hypertension and uh, plant proteins can actually lower blood pressure. And um, in the Chicago Western Electric study, they actually found that greater consumption of fruits, vegetables associated with significantly lower blood pressure, whereas beef, lamb, poultry, and veal consumption was associated with higher blood pressure after seven years. Um, and additionally, the, the DASH approach, which is a plant predominant diet, which has uh, been incredibly well, well studied and used for hypertension, they found that um, at putting patients on a plant predominant diet with lean meats and reduced sodium intake reduce both systolic and diastolic blood pressure by 5.5 and 3 millimeters of mercury respectively in hypertensive patients. So quite a powerful tool in reducing blood pressure. Um, and a vegan diet's actually been associated with achieving a lower blood pressure than omnivorous, pescatarian or vegetarian diets. Um, this has been demonstrated in both the Cardia and the Epic Oxford cohort studies. Um, well, what about the other risk factor like diabetes, especially type two diabetes, which we know puts our patients at risk for heart disease. We have numerous studies showing us that eating a um, whole food plant-based diet, so a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds can help to reduce risk for diabetes. Um, this is demonstrated in the Seventh-day Adventist study, the Rotterdam study, the NHANES data, um, and in numerous randomized controlled trials, including one that showed plant-based diet improved insulin resistance and B-cell function in just as little as 16 weeks. Well, what about lean meat, you may ask? Well, um, that's actually interesting. What we find is that, uh, you know, Ron Krauss did a study where he, um, it was a very well-designed study where um, randomized individuals to a high saturated fat diet that was either um, consistent of red meat, white meat, or a plant protein, a low saturated fat diet consistent of a um, red meat, white meat, or a plant protein. And they were randomized to that for four weeks. Then he uh, did a two to seven week washout and then did a crossover. And what they found was that regardless whether it was coming from red meat or white meat, either were raising LDL cholesterol as compared to the plant protein. 
And interestingly enough, if we look at some of our randomized control trials that have demonstrated interesting information about what we know about nutrition and cardiovascular risk, if we're even looking at secondary prevention, like the Leon Diet Heart Study, um, this was a randomized controlled interventional trial in secondary prevention of heart disease, where individuals were randomized to um, a Mediterranean style diet where they were uh, emphasized to eat more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, um, increase their bread, um, and you know, um, of course, all plant foods, and as well as um, reduce animal products, especially reducing um, butter and cream and replacing that with a uh, margarine high in polyunsaturated fat. So if you actually see uh, what they did in this study and what the experimental group actually did, there was um, a statistically significant increase in bread intake. Um, there was, it was not statistically significant, but um, 0.07 um, approaching uh, statistical significance increase of legumes, vegetables. There was a statistically significant increase in fruit. There was a statistically significant decrease in meat as well, as well as butter and cream, and an increase in margarine. So decreasing of animal products and increasing in plant products and you know, decreasing saturated fat and increasing poly and monounsaturated fat. Um, and the results of the Leon Diet Heart Study show that this reduced the risk of cardiac events um, significantly in the experimental group with these dietary changes. But um, one thing that I do want to uh, hammer home is that just eating, um, uh, just abstaining from animal products alone, that is not enough to uh, create a healthy diet. A healthful diet really has to be one that's, um, you've taken to the entire dietary context into account. You don't need to go 100% plant-based to see health benefits. And um, the reason why this study is important is that this study done by Satija was published in Jack in 2017. It's called um, Healthful and Unhealthful Plant-Based Diets and the Risk of Coronary um, Heart Disease in the U.S. And they looked at the Nurses Health Study, Nurses Health uh, Study 2, and the Nurses Health Professional Follow-Up. And <clears throat> in these prospective cohorts, they evaluated um, healthful plant-based diets. So these were um, uh, dietary foods. So these are fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, um, plant oils, um, teas, and, <clears throat> and unhealthful plant-based foods. So those are things like pastries, um, you know, uh, more processed, uh, highly processed foods, um, sugary drinks, things like that. And they found that both the unhealthy plant-based foods and animal foods were positively associated with coronary heart disease. But the more closely participants followed a healthful plant-based diet and ate more of these healthful plant-based foods, the lower their hazard ratio for coronary heart disease was. So important to note that um, it's really taking the entire diet into context and um, just abstaining from animal products alone doesn't necessarily make a diet healthy. It's really focusing on eating um, as many unprocessed healthful plant foods, um, as well as if you are eating animal proteins to try to eat fish and um, lean meat. So the basic pillars of cardiovascular disease prevention and diet um, from our American College of Cardiology 2019 guidelines are to focus on, again, total diet. So um, emphasizing fruits, vegetables, uh, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and fish. Um, if you uh, do eat animal products, fish is one with um, the most robust data to uh, show its benefit. Fats, um, especially uh, replacing saturated fat with mono and polyunsaturated fat sources and avoiding trans fats. Um, dietary cholesterol reductions, um, these can produce small reductions in CVD risk factors. Um, reductions in sodium and dietary sodium can also produce uh, small reductions in CVD risk factors. And um, car for carbohydrates, minimizing refined carbohydrates, reducing sugar sweetened beverages, and for proteins, eliminating processed meat intake, focusing on lean plant protein um, or a uh, a, a lean animal protein, but lean plant protein, as you saw from the Ron Krauss study, will be most beneficial in um, lowering LDL cholesterol if it's low in saturated fat. And I want to thank you so much for having me today, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you again.